Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. A few weeks ago, we heard the story of the blind man crying out to Jesus from the side of the road, and heard how his prayer, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, is one of the prayers in the Gospel accounts which form the basis for the Jesus prayer, so beloved in the Orthodox tradition. And today in this gospel, the publican, the Pharisee, which we read in preparation for Great Lent, we hear the other prayer from the gospels, which forms the basis of this prayer. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And we have in many of our prayers this identification of ourselves as sinners. And indeed, in the prayer which we recite every liturgy before communion, we go further than this, echoing the words of St. Paul in each of us referring to ourself as the chief of sinners. And so what is it to call oneself a sinner and most of all the chief of sinners? And what this doesn't mean, first of all, is when I say I'm the chief of sinners, I don't mean to say that I have carefully done a side-by-side -side comparison of my sins and everyone else's sins and worked out that, in fact, my sins are the worst of all. But that standing before God, beholding his greatness, his perfection, his glory, and all that he has called us to become, I am so overwhelmed with my falling short of this that I could not begin to look beyond that to judge the sins of those around me as well. But this judging of others, as we hear the Pharisee doing in the Gospel today, remains a great temptation for all of us because it is a way out of this standing before God in awe of his glory and this recognition of our own falling short of him. Faced with some sin within ourselves, some passion with which we struggle, it's a very easy distraction to look around and to find someone else who struggles with a similar temptation, perhaps in a more visible or at least a different way, and to persuade ourselves that we're all right because at least we're not like that person. And so this temptation to judge distracts us from the important comparison, which is not between ourselves and those around us, but between ourselves and the glory to which God has called us. And it not only distracts from recognizing God's greatness, and recognizing what he has called us to. But it is also paralyzing, because the temptation to judge others rather than to see our own sins is precisely the temptation to focus upon the evils that we cannot change instead of the evils that we can. How often we think of this desire to change the world for the better, to bring about some good change in the world. And we think of this on such a broad scale, such a grand scale, that we end up doing nothing because it all ends up seeming so much beyond our power. But God has given to each of us a part of the world that we can change with his help, which is our own hearts. Each of us has been given, with God's grace, this gift of being able to look to our own hearts, to root out sin from our hearts, and to stand before God and to be filled with his spirit, with his love. And by transforming this small part of the world over which we do have some power, to enable God to work through us, to bring about greater things in this world. 
But to do this, we must resist the temptation, like the Pharisee in today's gospel, to turn away from our own sins, not turning away from them by ceasing to do them, but turning our attention away from them, to focus on the sins of others, to condemn others and justify ourselves. And in doing so, we not only breed greater strife in the world by pitting ourselves against those whom God calls us to love as ourselves, but also turns us away from focus on those sins about which we could do something to those about which very often we can do absolutely nothing. And so today, God calls us to be like the publican in the gospel, casting ourselves before the mercy of God and acknowledging our own sins, not to be paralyzed with despair over them, but to recognize our sins and our need for God's mercy and to invite God's mercy into our hearts to cleanse us from our sins and to transform him evermore into his likeness so that we may become truly his temples, his presence in the world, shining forth his glory to all men. To him we praise, glory, honor, and worship, now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen.